that, I will pass my hand to the Beagle Master and I hope everybody enjoy. By the way, actually this year, our theme is to peace, enjoy for the coming year of the dog. Say goodbye to the rooster. Rooster sing a lot, right? But you know, we need to say goodbye. <laughs> okay, here is Master Xiang Liu. How are we doing? All right. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of demonstration, probably. Uh, just this. It's called Taegong. Uh, Zen Taegong. Zen, uh, which means uh, what? <laughs> I don't even know. So, Zen is uh, what is Zen to you? Harmony. Harmony? Wonderful. Anything else? Zen? Peace? Okay. Quiet? Okay. Beautiful. Anything else? Okay. So Zen means over here and over here, mouth and ears and everything of, of that nature. All right? Okay. Okay. Well, what else? Pardon? Void. Beautiful. Okay. Anything else? Enlightenment. Enlightenment. That is beautiful. Okay. Enlightenment. So everybody has different perspective of Zen. They all probably can, we can all say Zen is all of that, beyond. Zen, in my experience, in my 50 years of study, even though I'm only 32 years old, this year I'm going to be 32. <coughs> and with my 50 years experience, it's about uh, highest consciousness. It's about to tap into the high consciousness. It's about the, the infinite wisdom, that the infinite universe, which connect to with the infinite us, the inner ourselves. So we came from the same source as the universe. We have no difference with the universe. We call God within. How many Christians over here? Raise your hands. Wonderful. So I'm one of them. And how many Buddhists over here? Raise your hands. I'm one of them. How many uh, human are here? <laughs> <laughs> so we're all here babies. So actually we're the same. Okay? Doesn't matter what kind of label you put. Okay. I say God within. I'm a Christian because I was born as a Presbyterian. You know that. A lot of people probably have heard of that. I was born in a Presbyterian church. I was baptized at the Presbyterian church. And then again, I was baptized at Spring Hill Baptist Church in Mobile, Alabama. It is a nice. And then I see we are the same, you know. And I never baptized at the Shonen Temple, but I was a disciple of the Shonen Temple and for most of my life. And what I say, why I say this? Because this is, uh, God is uh, the ultimate wisdom. It's God is uh, the supreme wisdom. God is uh, the uh, highest order. And uh, Buddha is the same thing. Zen is the same thing. Zen over here, without religion, is about the highest consciousness. It's about that ultimate wisdom. That ultimate wisdom is not there. Look for it. No, you don't. Just like my teacher told me years ago, I probably repeat many times, Zen is not left. Zen is not right. Zen is not up or down or in the middle or in out. Where is it? I was looking all my life till I find it. And then one day I realized, wow, what am I? Who am I? Where did I come from? Where I'm going? I'm like everybody else, seeking. 
for the answer. And I realized there's nothing to seek. There's nothing to investigate. There's nothing to look for. Until then, you see, you contain the highest consciousness. As Jung said, everybody has heard of Jung, the psychologist. He said, we have God capacity. Every one of us has God capacity. That's exactly what Jung said. And same thing as Zen said, Buddha is within, the highest consciousness within. So when we look for somebody else to pray, to, to ask for it, have we got it? We just lay on bed and look for it. Or we will walk around like a rat, look for it. Have we got it? That's the thing. And I've been one of them. And then I, one day I see, I did so many years, and I realized that we all contain that wisdom, we all contain that intelligence, we all can tap into that high consciousness. So that is the Zen. Tai Gong, what is Tai Gong? So that's what I do, Zen Tai Gong. What is Tai? Tai is the micro, the ultimate micro, the infinite macro of the universe. That cosmic consciousness, exploration of that cosmic consciousness, internally and externally. That macro and the, the micro, the microscopic universe of ourselves within. That quantum state, so to speak. What is the quantum state? When we are look into the deep down, into atoms, each one of us has so many of our cells, below the cells we have deep down into atoms, below the atoms we have quarks, all that, what is that? When we are in that state, we call quantum state. During that state, what we are? We are particles, are we? Yes, are visible particles. But in the atom state, we are no longer that visible particles anymore. You cannot see. You cannot see unless you have very, very modern machine. And you see that atom, that atom full of what? Full of space. We are nothing but the space. The nuclei, what is that? It's a tiny thing. We thought that, that was solid, but the, even that nuclei is not a solid. It's dance around, in and out. We call Rule. That's my name. Ru is in and out. He doesn't stay there the whole time. The electrons running around everywhere. So nothing is a solid. That's why the quantum physics begins to see in the quantum world today, quantum physics, so all the people begin to see, we call unified field from M theory to string theory to unified field. And then we see the same thing as the Zen masters have seen thousands of thousands of years ago. We're nothing but the illusion. We came from nothing. From formless to forms, from nothingness to something. Walking for the nothing. Nothingness is the wisdom. Nothingness is the ultimate thing. So, Tai is about the ultimate reality of the macro, which you don't see. The dark energy, the light energy, the 95% of things you don't see, even with the, with the modern science, we don't see. But it doesn't mean it's not there, because it affects our lives every day, here and now. That's time. Gong, what is gong? Gong means the method. We 
our human beings are begin to see how can we tap into the high consciousness? How can we empty our mind? How can we make some space? Why you have to make space? Why you have to empty your mind? Why we have to have that void? Why? Because most of us, the cup is full. Don't you? Don't you see? You know, there's a professor came to see a, a master, and there's a master. And he was kept, kept talking how much he studied, how long he studied, how many years he experienced, how much he contributed. Da -da 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 -da. He just con continuously to express to the, the master how much I know about this Zen, this thing, academically. Then the master just put the tea. Put the tea. He said, hey, the tea is everywhere. It's on the table. And he still kept the tea because he kept he kept talking, he kept putting putting the tea. Why? Because he's a fool. He's full of it. American language, part of my French. So we need to have some space. When your computer is full of junk, it's full of spam, it's full of programs, it's full of information. Does your computer still work very well? Your cell phone, for example, you have all kinds of WeChat, you know, WhatsApp, all kinds of Facebook, all kinds of things, in your email, all kinds of programs. Hey, my phone is not working. It's stuck. Have you experienced that before? You need some space, don't you? Don't you need some space? We are holographical world because we are projection. We are the projection. We are, we are living in an illusion of what we see. Everything is real. Because if you are in a three-dimensional world, that's why you see everything is real because you are in it. Everything to you is a solid. It's not a solid. Nothing is a solid according to at least. We, science already gives the evidence that it's a, not a solid at all, according to Buddhist, according to Taoist, according to the old philosophers. And then the same thing. They have seen that a thousand years ago, but now we catch up. Use, use what? Use science to give evidence, to take pictures, to see. Nothing is solid. So that means we project who we are. The inner self will project who we are. And we empty some space. That a gong. It's a method, it's a step-by-step -step method to help you to let it go without attached to it. You know, attachment can be a, a burden to you, a burden to me, a burden to everybody, because we struggle, we fight. You know, we fight in the company, we fight in the house, we fight, fight everywhere. We thought it was with the wolf to fight, nothing. Trust me. You know, a hundred years later, you were nothing. A hundred years ago, you were nothing. The most important is here now. Your state is a mind. You make who you are. All the cancer patients I have seen in the past 30 years, there was not a single one did not make cancer themselves. Every one of them made the cancer themselves. Every heart disease person made themselves. That's reality. You know, you don't want to accept it, but that is reality. So, over here, I think you guys uh, come here, you know, to see me. I have nothing to offer. <laughs> really nothing to offer. And then all I can do is we all work together. Work together to raise the consciousness, to empty up, to get rid of the, all this information that blocked us, all these junks blocked us, these spams blocked us. Open up, open our channels, open our mind, expand our consciousness to raise our energy. When we raise the energy up and we have signals, we can signals to the upper consciousness, to the inner consciousness, 
And then if a week, the signals cannot send anywhere. That's reality. Because you are so weak. You listen to the radio. You try to get the signals, don't you? You have your cell phone. You try to get the signals, don't you? When your signal is so weak, you cannot get anything. Same thing with the consciousness, with your energy. That vibration of that frequency got to be in a level. That re resonance with the inner consciousness, with the universal consciousness, with the highest wisdom. And then you will see the world differently. The struggle is not necessary. It's a waste of time and effort. So, okay, I'm going to do a little bit of demonstration. And if you don't mind. Yes? Thank you. And uh, I'm going to do probably the beginning, just a little bit of meditation. And then into a little bit of slightly uh, movements, just to come out empty mind. And then I'm going to be flow into whatever comes to mind. Whatever doesn't come to mind, just flow with the nature. Thank you. All right. <coughs> Shall I do over here or over here? Okay, I'm going to do over here, okay?
Okay. That's a uh, take on. At the beginning, I did a little bit of meditation, just standing. Then I did a little bit of very first part of empty the mind. Just let everything go. Just see without seeing. Listen without listening. Hear without hear. But to raise the consciousness, to be aware but not involved with any surroundings, to go beyond the daily five senses, reach out to the next sense. So, when you do that, you empty mind, you see nothing, you start from the breath, the breath interconnected with your consciousness, the consciousness interconnected with your energy flow, with your chi, that chi is your chemicals, that chi is your breath, that chi is your psychic consciousness, that chi is your physical consciousness, that chi is your hormonal consciousness, that chi is your cell consciousness, that chi is everything, electrical, bioelectricity, everything involved with the waves of your body, the waves of your mind, the waves of each cell in quantum. Then I did a little bit of just a flow, so let it express itself. Of course, you know, did Kung Fu most of my life. So I put a little bit of Kung Fu in it, a little bit of Tai Chi in it, a little bit of everything in it. Because that's what I did all my life. I trained over 100 international champions, fighters. China. I think I probably I trained more fighters than China, any school in China, including all the professionals. I trained five UFC fighters. Have you heard of UFC? The text, you know. You know the cage fight. You know, normally I do not like the cage fight very violent. But at the same time, in order to be able to deal, to be strong, in the you say, well, I can defend myself. I'm one of the found peace. And then, I say, well, I cannot defend myself because you didn't have a choice. You are a victim of violence. When you do not want to be harmed, victim of violence, you've got to be innerly strong, you've got to be externally strong, you've got to be able to, to handle all the situations, and then you say, I choose to be peaceful. Then you truly, you choose to be in peace. Otherwise, you're on sick bed, sick bed, and you say, I want peace. Because you were forced to be in that position. You don't have a choice. You didn't choose to be so. Your victim can be any time. You know, I'm a small. And then it doesn't matter who they are. I'm never, ever afraid that guy is going to hit me or shoot me because I have experienced all of that and without. Any, any sign of this 
straw to be afraid because I thought I was joking. When people put a gun in my head, I thought that was a joke. You gotta be joking. That's the first thing I told him. You gotta be joking. You put a, a gun on my head. Are you crazy? Or what? So that's what comes to my mind. The first thing comes to my mind. And that signal sent to him is totally different signals he sent to him. And then he put his gun down as I requested. Just put his gun down. Otherwise, you'll be in big trouble. And he put his gun down. Because it's a signal. It is a signal you sent. It's the conscious signal. Human beings. Relayed by consciousness, relayed by signals. Even a dog can see the signals. Plenty of people, you know, got in trouble with me. You know, I've been to the United States for 30 years, even though I'm only 32 years old. And I met plenty of people, bullies. Some people feel sorry, some people bow, some people nail down to say, I'm going to go home to do some, 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 some learning, so I feel better. You know? That's the United States. It's a violent country. It's a lot of people violent. But when you are able to handle yourself, when you have the skills, when you have the high consciousness, when you see what you deal with, how to deal with it? You don't have to worry. That fear, human beings drive by fear. A lot of masters say, well, I'm a master, a lot of the Taiji masters. 99% of the people who do Taiji doesn't know how to, do not know how to defend themselves. That's reality, including all the people in China, I told them. This is on Chinese television, I told them. Including all my friends, our grandmasters. I know 90%. 99% of the grandmasters in China. That's reality. Because you do not do combat, there's no way you can defend yourself. You have to be in combat. You have to have raised that consciousness, that mind said, just like we defend ourselves with the de from disease, we've got to learn how to be healthy. That's the topic today we are doing. If you focus on disease, you think you're gonna get health? Don't you think? Because you focus on the disease, you feed that disease, you pay attention to the disease. You never get help, trust me. How many hospitals we had before? I remember in China, when I was in China, there were not many hospitals. But that's hospitals spread out all over the place now and spread all over the China. Do they have less disease? All the hospitals more crowded than ever before. Same thing in the United States, but not the technology. Do you have less disease, heart disease, cancer, anything disease? Do they have less? No. They have more. You, when you focus on disease, you're going to get disease. That's how the conscious works. This seminar is about health. It's about a quantum health. What is quantum health? What is quantum healing? What is quantum? Tell me, anybody, to your knowledge, to whatever you think. Give me some idea, anybody. What is quantum? Infinity, Infinity. beautiful. Infinity, what is quantum? Maximum. Maximum. What is quantity? What is the quantum? Infinity. What is quantum? Quantum state. What is quantum state? What is quantum state to you? Anybody? Center. Zero point. Zero point. Yes. Pardon? View of the observer. Beautiful. View of the observer. Beautiful Zen mind. That's precisely I look at. The center, the, the zero point. What is the zero point? It's the highest state of being. 
Zen. The view, because we are holographic beings. We are projection of the holographic beings. What do we do is what do we project. What do we think? It is what we project. What is the direction of our consciousness? It is the way we are. What who, who we are? Exactly. The quantum state is the who we see we are. If we tap into the high consciousness, we're going to be the person of the wisdom. If we tap into the spams, the disease, if we, we if we tap into this junk information, we become part of that junk information. Don't you agree? People always struggle because you are in it. Why struggle? You are in it. Get out of it. Rise above. Expand your consciousness. Rise on top of that consciousness. Because that low consciousness, if you want to stay there, you can stay there. Poo-poo has consciousness. If you want to poo-poo, that's reality. Rats have consciousness. You want to be a rat? Roaches have consciousness. You want to be roaches? It's up to you. Why you never get into the fight with the ants? Tell me why you, when ants fight, they have a, a column fight. The ants world fight. Have you got into that? The ants war. Have you get? Have you ever got into the ants war? I'm going to be part of the king of the ants kingdom. Have you been got into that? No, you haven't. Why? Because that's the lowest level. That's main one dimensional world. You never got into because they, the the ants why? Put a one thing over here, over here. The ants thought it was from the sky. Something that's great from the sky coming over. That's the, Incredible. To them, it's incredible. Just like you. You see in front of you, you see everything's blocked. When you rise above, you see things differently. That's why Western medicine sometimes treats so many diseases, never get a single thing resolved. Why? Because they stay in the physical world. They stay with the problems because they seek problems, they read problems, they still get the problems. They never, ever, ever solve a single problem. The Chinese medicine sometimes are different. We call bird view, bird view. We see the roots, the roots of, of the matter. That's what it's about. What is the roots of the matter? The most of the, our hospitals see a disease, it's a disease, and this is a problem, I'm going to solve the problem. Okay, let's say this, just like the cancer patients I met, a lot of cancer doctors I met, what do they do? The doctors, okay, you have a mushroom, wood mushroom, wood fungus theory. Okay, the fungus coming out from the wood, and you cut it. Do you think that your fungus is cut it? Do they grow more fungus? Tell me. Do they grow more fungus? They're going to grow more fungus. Trust me. You cut all the fungus and get out. Do they grow more fungus? Why they do? Why they do? Why do they do? The problem is still there. The environment to produce the fungus has always, always been there. That's exactly what they're doing. And the hospitals, tell me which hospital doesn't do that. We'll give you chemotherapy to kill the cancer, but to kill more healthy cells, kill the immune system more than anything else. We cut the cancer. Exactly like a cancer, you cut the fungus, exactly the same principle you are doing. Don't you believe that? That's going to solve the problem? Simply, sometimes it's simple. Just put the word into the dry land, get the sun without any water. What's going to happen? 
He tries. He's going to grow fungus again. When it's so dry, when it's so dry, does it grow fungus again? Tell me. No, it's not going to grow fungus. Same thing as cancer. That's how I deal with the cancer patient for the last 30 years. I do not treat cancer. I told everybody. All the people come to me because, not because they can treat somewhere else. None of them can be treated somewhere else because they're all stage four cancer. They're all kicked out of the hospital. They're all told they had no hope anymore because he spread. But they never treated cancer to start with. They destroyed this immune system. So these patients come to me, Janet, for example, and she's in your audience today. 2003, she had breast cancer. And 2008, she found me. She said, my cancer came back and with a full blow. She did two surgeries, did chemotherapy, and eventually everything destroyed. And then doctors say, it spread out. You know, you got it. You probably just got lucky that you have a tumor. If you're not lucky, you have two weeks. That's it. She came to me, and then we did Tai Chi. We really didn't do much Tai Chi. We did a little bit of meditation. We did a little bit of Qigong. We did a little bit of Tai Gong. We did a little bit of stuff. Calm down to communicate. That's all it is. To raise the energy up. To raise the consciousness up. To focus on what? To focus on how, to focus on great health cells, to raise all the consciousness, just like everything, to dry out, give our oxygen, give communication. That's all it is. I didn't do anything. I don't know how to do anything. All I know is meditation. All I know is a little bit is a take on. All I know is the ancient. so that they can get the wisdom together, they can communicate together, they can do the organization and reorganize the organism. That's all it is. Today, she's still teaching a lot of people, a lot of people who have cancer, survivors, she called it help them out. Just that. What is your inner reason? One thought, one life changed. When you just turn around, it's simple as that. When you're awake, that's not going to help. It's not going to be solve the problem because the material things is outside the body. That chemicals are not going to solve your problem because it doesn't belong there. Destroy everything. And then she realized. We have wisdom within. We have the immune system within. We have the power within. We have that consciousness. We can help ourselves. We have the ability, the capacity to help ourselves. We can invite the greatest consciousness within. We can unveil the wisdom. We can uncover that hidden inner intelligence out to help us. We all have, we all do. Nothing is not that difficult. I treated many, many, many cancer patients. Yes, a lot of people did die. Five years later, 10 years later, 20 years later, I cannot guarantee anybody you're going to live forever. But every one of them, every one of them will tell you, lived more than six years than they promised, than any doctors have promised. You know, we see that in the stats in the United States, cancer patients. 66% they say, well, we don't know what happened. It's bad luck. It's either genes or something else. 66% called bad luck. 
percentage. They have another 20%, 25% is because of fear. The fear of the disease drive them to die right away. Oh yeah. When you have a fear, you're shocked. You shut down everything. They're right. The to doctor tell, tell you three months, you're going to be delivering three months. Why? Because you believed what he said. Unfortunately. One of my students, Dr. Wen, and after I had talked with him, after I treated him, after we had sessions for two years, and then all his patients, he tell them, nobody can send him to, to death for three months or five months or six months. Nobody should not have that right. He began to translate the idea. It's not my idea. That's ancient ideas. So it has always been there. I just relay the information. So he began to relay the information because he's a cancer director for the medical center in Chicago, used to be in Mobile, Alabama. He was about my patient. Nobody has treated his, his neck problem. And then I did five times, and then we solved the problem, ever. Something is simple, but a Western doctor just treated specific symptoms, you know? The root of the problem is still there. But people refused to see the roots of the problem. Because one thing, because the books, the book blocked the eyes. The knowledge blocked the eyes. The knowledge blocked the wisdom, the common sense sometimes. Sometimes knowledge can be blockage. That's very. Sometimes the material things you you see right in front of you become the blockage of your wisdom. That is called Zen. Tada, tap into the high consciousness. So this class is about tap into the high consciousness. What is the tap into the high consciousness? Simply, I'm the mind. I'm the mind. You see the void. Because when you empty mind, and you then you can download, you can give the command, you can tap the high consciousness. You can see the 